Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use integrals to measure flow across. So I'm going to start by computing an example. So I've got a vector field y comma x plus y, and I have an ellipse that I've parameterized cosine comma two sine plus two comma zero. So an ellipse centered at two comma zero. And I want to measure the net flow of the vector field across this closed curve. Uh, kind of hard to tell what's going on from that plot. And so we can get a better picture of what's going on if we just plot the field vectors whose tails are on the curve. Basically, if we just plot field of x of t, y of t. So there's a slightly better picture. Um, you know, still kind of tough to measure the net flow of the vector field across that curve. Um, I have some vectors that are pointing outside to inside and some vectors that are pointing inside to outside. So maybe I want a you know, slightly better measure of the net flow of the vector field across the curve that's a little more precise than what I can do just by eyeballing it. So uh, let's do a slightly better job here. I'm just going to look at the component of the field vectors in the direction of the normal vectors. So I'm going to plot the push of the field vectors in the direction of the normal vectors fields.normal over normal.normal .normal times the normal vectors. Here's a plot. All right, pretty clear what's going on. I know that this is going to compute to inside to outside. The net flow of the vector field across this curve is in the direction of my outer normal vectors. Um, but I can get a more precise answer if I try to use an integral to accumulate this effect numerically. Now, in order to set up the integral that I want to compute, the key observation here is noticing that field.normal is really the expression that measures what's going on, right? Um, at, at each point here, I could figure out if the field vectors are pushing with or against my normal vectors by seeing if this dot product evaluates to a positive number or a negative number. And obviously the more positive, the stronger the push, and the less positive, the weaker that push is. So I want to accumulate that net effect as I traverse my closed curve. Um, so the integral I want to compute is the integral of field.normal. Now you're going to notice this is the right-footed normal. So that's going to be a standard construction there that we use the right-footed normal. And as long as we make sure that we have a parameterization that goes in the counterclockwise direction, um, the right-footed normal is going to be an outer normal vector for us. Um, if you ever end up in a situation where your curve is parameterized in the wrong direction, the clockwise direction, um, or you use the wrong right-footed, the wrong normal vector, um, you can always correct those issues. Oftentimes, after you finish your calculation, you can go back and make some adjustments. Um, a lot of times you just have to multiply your answer by negative one to fix it. But when you're setting up these problems from scratch, what you want to be doing is making sure that you have a counterclockwise parameterization and that you're using the right footed normal. And then you don't have to worry about make any, making any corrections at the end. All right, so let's perform our measurement. We are going to perform, uh, we are going to compute the integral of field dot normal, field dot y prime of t comma negative x prime of t. And we have all the information we need. We know our vector field. We know our parameterization for our, our ellipse. So we really just put it all together. And so our field of x of t, y of t, when you plug x of t, y of t into this vector field y comma x plus y, we get this expression. And when we compute some derivatives, y prime and negative x prime, just be careful not to mix these up. Don't, actually, don't accidentally put the tangent vector in there or anything. We get two cosine comma sine, evaluate that dot product. And just like in the previous video, we get a, an integral that involves a lot of sines and cosines. That's gonna be a very common theme. You have to be comfortable integrating an expression that involves lots of powers of sines and cosines. This is gonna work out to two pi. And we then summarize the net flow of the vector field across our curve is with the direction of our normal vectors. And since we have a counterclockwise parameterization and we used the right footed normals, um, this is going to be from inside to outside. Now, uh, here's a little summary slide, very similar to the previous video. So again, um, if you ever see 
an integral with a little loop-de-loop -loop on it, that's an indicator that we have a closed curve. You should uh, assume that little loop-de-loop -loop is demanding a counterclockwise parameterization for your curve C. And um, if you don't see the little loop, that means you have an open curve. If you do see the loop, um, you have a closed curve. Be careful here. Um, inside to outside and outside to inside only really makes sense when you have a closed curve. So you, won't, you don't want to say that the net flow of a vector field across an open curve is inside to outside. But an open curve doesn't have an inside or an outside. So terms like inside to outside or outside to inside are really reserved for the case where you are lucky enough to have a closed curve. Um, I forgot to mention that in my previous video. Uh, it was on the slide, though. The same applies for clockwise and counterclockwise. It doesn't really make sense to say clockwise or counterclockwise when you have an open curve. That is not very, that's kind of nonsensical. So um, do be careful to only apply that vocabulary in the case when you have a closed curve. And uh, last thing I'll mention before moving on, there's a really common physics interpretation of flow across and it's flux. So you'll see that in various different, um, you know, electricity and magnetism, problems involving the flow of heat, um, you're, you're gonna be able to compute flux using flow across. All right, again, this slide is very similar to my previous video. Um, if the integral of field.normal, if the integral of negative n dx plus m dy ends up as positive, then the net flow of the vector field across our closed curve is from inside to outside. That's, of course, if you have a closed curve with a counterclockwise parameterization. If your path integral ends up negative, then the net flow of the vector field across the curve is from outside to inside, and it is always possible for these path integrals to compute to a uh, value of zero. Um, remember that this notation that you see on this slide, not very good for running any numbers or for crunching numbers, um, but it is a nice theoretical tool. Um, it's nice condensed notation, and uh, you guys should get used to recognizing this path integral as an indicator that you're probably doing a flow across calculation, the integral of negative n dx plus m dy. There's other ways of interpreting this notation. You'll see it on a triad problem, but for the most part, we associate this notation with flow across. All right, finally, let's just uh, crunch the numbers on one more example here. So in this case, my curve is a circle. I'm gonna have to parameterize that unit circle. And here's my vector field. This is given information here. And I'm gonna compute the net flow of my vector field across my closed curve. When I see the integral of negative n dx plus m dy, my standard interpretation is gonna be flow across. There's gonna be other ways you could look at it, um, but we're gonna interpret that as flow across for this case. Um, now, if you plot the vector field and the curve, eh, not so helpful, kind of have a hard time. You know, I can could, I could kind of eyeball it and guess that it's gonna be outside to inside, but it's really hard to uh, determine the magnitude of that effect. Um, and it's always possible to, to look at these plots and kind of get it a little bit off, a little bit wrong. All right, so it's, it's better if we just plot um, the field vectors whose tails are on the curve, field of x of t, y of t. And you guys know you can get an even better picture if you plot the component of the field vectors in the direction of the normal vectors. Um, field dot normal over normal not nor dot normal times the normal vectors. And that's a pretty good plot. I am very convinced that the net flow of the vector field across this closed curve is gonna be outside to inside. We can measure that more precisely though by computing an integral. All right, so to wrap up here, here's our vector field. Here's our parameterization for the unit circle. Uh, this is obviously a counterclockwise parameterization, but you still wanna do a mental check. Um, so we're good, counterclockwise parameterization. And now we really just put it all together. So here's this notation that's not very good for running the numbers, not very, very good for computation. And here's a form that you guys should become familiar with, the integral of negative n of x of t, y of t, x prime of t plus m of x of t, y of t, y prime of t, dt. You just plug in all of the pieces and you get negative two pi and you get your points at the end by finishing with an interpretation. This negative result tells you that the net flow of the vector field across the curve is going to be against the direction of our outer normal vectors 
or because we have a counterclockwise parameterization and we were using um, the right footed normal, we could just say outside to inside. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. In my next video, I'm going to talk about gradient fields.